Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is video number 12 in the series CK2024. In this video, we'll be looking into cron jobs, jobs and the important concept of daemon set. So we'll be covering all these. Although cron job and jobs are not really important from CKA perspective, it's more on the CKAD curriculum, but we'll have a look at that. We'll see some basics of it because I just wanted to cover uh, some fundamentals of it. So that's why I've included it. But daemon set is important from this uh, exam perspective and from uh, the Kubernetes point of view as well. So we'll be looking those as well. And uh, the likes target for this video is 200 likes and comment target is 120 comments in the next 24 hours. I hope you guys can do it. So yeah, without any further ado, let's start the video. Okay, so in the previous videos, we have looked into daemon sets, replicas, pods, and how they are deployed in multiple nodes. The way it works is uh, we specify a field called replicas in the YAML file in the manifest of that Kubernetes object. Like in the deployment, we have specified replicas as three. So that is the reason it actually created three different pods like nginx1 nginx2 and nginx3 three different pods on multiple nodes like irrespective of number of nodes that are there so that's how it distributed it daemon sets work similarly with a slight change instead of creating replicas on multiple nodes as we've specified what it will do it will create the replicas in all the nodes one replica each node that's how it does so let's say we have uh, we have a daemon set daemon set called sample let's say we have a daemon set of a agent like a monitoring agent okay. so what it will do it will create three pods because we have three nodes running so it will create here one pod second pod and third pod so it will create one pod in each of the nodes and as soon as we add a new node, let's say over here in the cluster, there is a new node added. This is our newer node that we have just added. It will detect that, that there has been a new node created and it will create a new replica of the daemon set. It doesn't happen in case of deployments or replica sets or uh, just the standalone pods, but it happens in case of daemon set. And as soon as we delete this node, okay, this daemon sets replica will also be deleted. So there are certain use cases why we use daemon set. One is I've already mentioned a uh, mo monitoring agent. The other is logging agent. Um, we have some control plane components as well and some networking components such as queue proxy. Right, queue proxy is deployed in the cluster as a daemon set. Then we have certain networking concepts such as um, Weavenet. So this is a CNI plugin for networking. I uh, will look that in detail when we look into the networking section of this course. But uh, so there is Weavenet. Then we have there are some alternatives of it. We have Planel, and if you are working with Kubernetes, so you might have heard Calico. So these all are the uh, networking CNIs, right? And these all are deployed as a daemon set. So I hope you would have now understand the importance of daemon set and why do we use it. So it make sure that the number of replicas is equal to number of nodes and each node has one running replica all the time right it works the same way if we delete uh, one replica it will instantly recreate it because of the controller controller takes care of that and uh, there are certain applications where we use it why do we need to use it in uh, monitoring and logging agent because you know let's say a uh, monitoring agent is something that has to run all the time to gather all the metrics from the node and it has to run on each node, right? And the same way logging agent, maybe it has to report certain logs or it has to stream certain logs, application logs or node level logs to a third party system such as Plunk or uh, Elk or something else. Then also it has to run all the time on all the nodes. So that's 
one of the uh, requirements then we have queue proxy which is a control plane component and it is responsible for port to port networking which we have already seen and again it has to run on all the nodes to make that possible now uh, let's go to our console and let's see how do we create it so i have actually okay let me delete this first Okay, so um, the YAML is pretty much the same. The specification is same as deployment. Let me create this again. So uh, we had a deploy.yaml. Okay, I'll take this one. So the one that we've used in the deployment video, we have seen it multiple times. So I'm not gonna create it from the scratch, but I'm sure by this time, you know how to create the YAML for a manifest and all the different fields right so i have taken the deployment yaml that we have created earlier and i've pasted it over here so let's make few changes instead of deployment let's change it to replica set sorry should not be replica set it should be a daemon set right and uh, the api version is same as deployment uh, you can verify it with kubectl explained daemon set and let's call it ds okay and over here you see there was a field called replicas because the difference between deployment replica sets and daemon set is that in in deployment sets we actually specify the number of replicas that we run and controller and scheduler schedule the pods based on the availability based on the resources available on the nodes and few other constant resource and limits certain and toleration and other concepts right but in daemon set it irrespective of the replicas that we want it creates one replica of that daemon set on each of the available nodes that's what it do right so we don't need this field in daemon set so i'm gonna remove it now let's apply this ds.yaml and it says it's created now we do kubectl get pods you will see only two pods running but now you would say you have just mentioned that it it should run on all the available nodes so we have three nodes running why it is running two pods this is for the reason that control plane node has something called as taint that means we can only schedule control plane components on control plane node and this is a workload this is a custom workload that we have just deployed from our side it is not part of control plane components so that node is not able to tolerate this that is why it did not schedule it on we'll see that concept in deep right and we'll uh, practice it because this is an important concept taint and toleration but over here because it did not schedule the pod that is why i wanted to mention the reason why it did not schedule the pod on that node again we can try deleting this one of the pods so kubectl delete pod okay it says it deleted and if we do get pods again now we see two pods are running again it recreated it the way deployments or replica sets work let's see the other component that i've mentioned kube proxy so get ds okay so we have this current only one but we have to check in all the namespaces because kube proxy run on kube system namespace so for that we can do two things we can either do get ds hyphen a capital a this will return the object from all the namespaces capital a for all the namespaces or we can specify namespace as cube system if we know in which namespace we are looking for certain object right because we know cube proxy reside in cube system namespace so we can specify that as well so now it says we have actually two uh, daemon sets running one is kindnet which is uh, created by kind for networking and then we have cube proxy with three desired three ready and three available replicas we have three nodes and it deployed cube proxy in all three nodes like how it's supposed to be now let's have a look at a single node cluster running as well let's see how many replicas of these daemon sets are there so kind uh, get clusters i guess that's uh, the single node one so i'm gonna use i'm gonna switch to that by kubectl config 
use context and I'm gonna name the context kind single node. Okay, now I have switched to that. And if we do kubectl get nodes, there is only one node which is a control plane node. And if we do ctl get daemon set hyphen all, so we have again cube proxy cube net. But you see, because these both of these are daemon sets, one desired, one current, and one ready. And if we do get pods hyphen all okay and you see uh, one q proxy pod and one kind net pod and that's it because this is running as a daemon set and we only have one available node that is why i deployed that on one single node right so this is the concept of daemon set and how do we do it and let's switch back to um, the other one the other cluster that we were working on so instead of this one, I'm just gonna say cluster CKA cluster three. Okay, and get nodes. Um, I'm back on this cluster. Okay, so now if we do keep CTL get pods iPhone and cube system, and let's actually use a grep on cube proxy okay we have these three cube proxy pod running oh no not cube proxy the one uh, that we have created so it should be available in the default namespace this one so let's copy this and we can inspect that in same way that we do because it is underneath a pod so we can do a describe on it we can do a log on it we can even exec into it so if we do a uh, cube ctl describe Pod, right? Um, uh, it shows the same type of events, and then uh, it is running on port eighty. It uses nginx image, and it is part of a daemon set. That is why it is says controlled by daemon set. This, uh, in case of a replica or deployment, it says controlled by deployment. This, right? So yeah, that's uh, that's about the daemon set. Um, now let's have a look at cron. So we have two more uh, similar object types in Kubernetes. One is a cron job and another one is a job. So before looking into cron job, uh, we'll just have a overlook of it. So if we go to, to, to do cron job over here on the documentation, you see cron job is basically a type of job that we execute on a certain time at a certain day or after a certain interval. And we specify that schedule with the help of this format. Now, if you are not aware of how cron syntax work, this is the cron syntax and it's uh, mostly used in Unix based system. So we set a cron syntax like this and it will make sure that a script or a command or a build is triggered at that particular schedule that we have specified. So if you are new to this, Let's quickly see overview of how it works and few examples, then we'll come back to this. So there are usually five fields in this syntax represented default by five asterisks. So the first one represents minutes and allowed values are zero to 59. Second one is R allowed values are zero to 23. Third one is day of month and allowed value is one to 31. The next one is month allowed values as you have guessed right 1 to 12 and then day of week. This is from 0 to 6 and it starts with Sunday and ends on Saturday. So let's see you want to trigger a build on every Saturday. Every Saturday the option that we have provided is a day of the week. So we'll be updating this particular field over here day of the week and you see Saturday is 6 number 6. So this is what we'll use. So over here in place of asterisk, it will be six and rest of the places, it will be asterisks. So let's say you want to trigger your build on every Saturday, but only at 11 PM at a certain time. So first you will use six for Saturday and then we have an hour of the day, right? 11 PM, which is this one, because this is represented in 24 hours format. So we'll be using 23 over here as 11 p.m. 
right? And for rest of the places, we'll use asterisk. So now this build will run on every Saturday at 11 p.m. at 2300 hours. Let's see one more example. If we want to trigger the build on every Saturday at 11.45 p.m. So we have one more condition added, which is minutes. So for Saturday, again, 6. For 11 p.m., it is R. And for 45 minutes, this should be the first one. So Saturday, 11.45 p.m. And for rest, it should be star. I hope you have got it now and you could practice this more. You could understand the, the cron syntax better. I'll paste the link as well of the official cron page and you could just have a glance at it. There is one more thing that I want to discuss it with you before we move ahead. So let's say if you want to trigger build at every five minutes. So for that, you have to use asterisk divide by n to every nth interval of time. What I mean by that is if you want to run your build at every 10 minutes, then you would use star divide by 10 and for rest of the places as asterisk. So for this example, if we want to run it for every five minutes, then it will be asterisk by five. So this build will run at every five minutes with star and asterisk at the rest of the places. I hope this would be clear now. Okay, now that we know the, about the cron syntax and now that we know that putting all the star here means it will run every single minute or we can do star slash one to run it every one minute and so on. So we have seen enough examples. I'm sure you can practice that and you will understand the uh, syntax of a cron now. So what it will do, so if we uh, use this manifest, I'm not going to run it now because as I've said, it's not really important from the exam perspective, but I'm just providing you an overview. So um, if you use this YAML, right, what it will do first, it will run every single minute. And what it will do, it will spin up a pod with uh, the name hello and with busybox 1.28 image, and it will execute this command. And this will just print out the time. So with the date command in Unix, we can just print out the time and the message that echo hello from Kubernetes cluster. So every single minute, it will print out the time and the hello message. So that's what it will do. And that's all about the cron job. And there are certain use cases like why do we use it? Maybe we have to uh, generate certain reports at certain time of the day or like the daily report, weekly report or monthly reports then we use cron job or we have to execute certain tasks, let's say a cleanup job, a job that clears uh, all the previous logs or some previous logs. For, for those purpose, we use a cron job in, in Kubernetes. Uh, similar to cron job, we have another concept called jobs and the way it works, it works pretty much the same. It just, it does not execute on a certain time of the day. It executes once and it is then completed and it is mostly part of let's say some installation scripts or uh, let's say you are provisioning a new cluster or something and you have specified a job object as part of one of your automation pipelines so let's say it will create a node or it will do some operations and then it will be completed so that's what it do and that's the only difference so you can have a look at the example you can have a look at the documentation and you will get the idea okay uh, that's uh, that's about job so we have covered uh, cron job job and daemon said in today's video i hope uh, uh, you were able to understand it and there is a small assignment task in the github repository in day 12 folder so feel free to check that out try to attempt it and you know uh, let us know if you have any issues in the comment section or in the discord community and we'll be there to help you out so try to complete the comments and like target for this video and i will see you as soon as you complete the target i will see you with the next video so thank you so much for watching i hope you have a good day